How's everybody doing? I want to show you how to make these small little conifer trees. They're not difficult to make. And the nice thing about them is they apply to any scale, really, like N, H, O, O, even Z scale. Like they would be really large trees. You could, you know, um, you know, cut them and shape them and, and pull them apart. You know, you can make them look like, like a large old tree like that, or they can be, you know, a smaller conifer, like an O scale or, or a mid-sized tree in H, O, okay? So I'm going to show you the materials that I use. And the process is really, uh, it doesn't take long to make them, it, but you have to stretch it out over a week, like a couple hours each evening to produce like a flat like this. That's how long it took me. And I'll show you what you need first of all, okay, for materials. I like to use this stem wire you can get at Michael's Craft Store. It's called 20 gauge and it has a little bit of a green coating on it. Um, I'll pull one out and show you. And what I like to do is, is just rough, like just take a piece of sandpaper and just stroke it a couple of times just to put a little bit of tooth on it. It gives uh, a little extra grip for the matte medium because this is a kind of a plastic coating over a metal wire. And so the more grip you can create through mechanical bonding, then the better, right? So I basically take one wire like this. And then what I do is, is I take like this Liquitex matte medium. I've talked about this before. This is what I use. So I'm not going to go into all the semantics as to why I use it. It's like, it's just the go-to product for me, okay? Some people say it's expensive, but it isn't. It's actually cheaper than Mod Podge per volume because you can actually thin it down like it already has a really like the perfect viscosity straight out of the jar like it's uh see that it just slowly runs down like that you want it to like that's the viscosity that that's perfect for this now you can thin this with water if you want but that just depends how you develop your style when you build trees because when you start building numbers uh you're gonna become more familiar with the product okay so you also need a jar of water to put your brushes in liquitex matte medium i prefer you can try other adhesives but i'm not going into those and then you're going to need some static grass by evergreen 12 mil you can use dark green like you can use any color you want because it doesn't really matter that much because i'm going to paint these at this stage i'm going to paint these probably dark brown a little bit with the airbrush but not totally the nice thing about the airbrush in this case is I can get in close and do the stem, like the main trunk, and leave a little bit of green on here. And then at, then once that's done, I can do a little bit of matte medium with the brush and just sprinkle on your choice of flock or ground foam, okay? So what I do is the first process is I just take matte medium and I just smear it all over the wire, okay? It gets a bit messy, so you need a, like a table like this to do it in. And then what I do is, is I just drop the 12 mil onto the stem. And it'll glue, but not that well. Like It'll put the first initial fibers onto it so that it looks like this. See that? That's the first application, okay? And then when those are dry, I just give a stroke like that because you're always going to have to massage off the loose fibers through every process. So you go from the bare wire to this. Now you've got some tooth, more tooth for an, another application, <clears throat> excuse me, of 12 mil, right? So here's the um, second application. See how there's more? I do the same thing. I, I basically paint on matte medium, sprinkle again right and i just have a big pile and i just go like this in fact i even thatch it and stab it on too just just get it on that's all that matters and then when this dries you give it another couple more strokes and then you do it again i like to do it about five times okay one two three four five applications so you that's why it can take a week or if you're doing it throughout the day you can wait a couple hours two or three hours depending on the temperature of the room so this is, excuse me, this is the uh, about the fifth application. You can see now, right? 
See that? Now you can see where I'm going with this to get this, right? So what I do is, is I take the wire now and I just snip it. And then this one, I'll probably take the top of that wire off. And then what I do is uh, just to fix the tops a bit, because the tops are important on trees. The one thing that really bothers me is when there's a stubby end like that. So I just take a smaller brush and I just put a little glob of matte medium on the top. And I grab some like this, pinch and stab. Remember I showed that about pinch and stabbing for doing foliage around the edges of buildings and right of ways and so on. That's all you do, right? Just grab a pinch like that and just stick it on the top and then let go like that. That's all you do and then put it on your palette. Okay, and then what you end up with is this. You just take this again and massage it off. Now, if, if this tree is not full enough for you, excuse me, you can take matte medium again and just stab it into the tree. Just paint the tree, the fibers like that, and then grab your, your fibers and then re-sprinkle again. Let them dry. And then this is what you get. You get them like they look more, more puffy, but then as soon as you watch what comes off of these in closing here, watch. I'll, I'll grab a, through, a few because these are almost ready for paint. So see how I recover all this? And it's all good too. Like that's the beauty of matte medium. It's not, it's, it's hard to explain. Like it doesn't like, this is wax paper here, parchment, so nothing will stick to it even if there's glue on it. So you can keep reusing this, recycling it over and over again. Because you're going to recover about 60-70% of your fibers. Like see this one here? So I'm just going to strip that one, massage. That way you get a good solid tree and it won't shed unnecessarily once you're finished. You want to get all the loose off. See all that that I'm recovering from those? Now that's ready. That one, the top's been done, see? So this tree is ready. Now you can flock them just like that if you want with some foam and call them done. But what I like to do is take an airbrush and I'm going to airbrush dark brown in here. But not the whole tree, but you can if you want. And then try to see this as just the branch work. And then when you put on green foam like fine turf, for example, or even two mil static grass uh, is another method. And the trees end up looking really awesome. They just take a little bit of work and process and you can end up with a really nice flat of trees to plant on your layout, okay? And furthermore, the more masochistic you are, right? Like I did a dozen, try 24. <laughs> Go for it, right? Um, extra trees aren't going to hurt you, okay? So trees, pretty fairly easy trees and they're really convincing trees as well. And then I'll show you what they look like the final once they're painted and flocked up, okay? Okay, let's throw a little bit of paint on these little trees here. A um, couple things. First, I just want to mention quickly. So I usually just mix up a what I call umber, Tamiya umber. Uh, there is no Tamiya umber by label. It's just from the XF line, the flat colors, flat black and linoleum deck brown. Or you can use Hall red, but red like 50-50, but I thin these down to about three bottles each, three blocks, three of these, and then do a 50-50 in one per volume, right? Just to get a red brown, a deep kind of red brown, which is this color here in one of my old bottles from 20 years ago. 20 years I've had this bottle, the, the bigger one. From just I've cleaned it a few times, but there it is. It's kind of a red brown. See that? And it's a good warm go-to color for tree trunks. I find for small ones. And just a couple other things uh, before I load up my airbrush. So <laughs> you ever go on forums? Sometimes they're funny, eh? Like I don't spend much time, but somebody I was on a forum. I don't want to say the name, but. Somebody said, oh, Boomer said that uh, Badger and Pache are overrated. <laughs> I never said that, right? It's like it goes to show you people start rumors and they hide behind the avatar, right? Like this is probably owned by Badger. Like this was given to me by one of my clients. Actually, he gave me two airbrushes over 20 years ago. And I have Iwata's, Pache, Badger, some other no-name brands that actually were the ones that were reliable when I was grabbing in the studio because... 
you know, when you're in the profession and that, you don't have time to mess around. You just want a tool that works, right? So, it, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. Maybe in the hobby, they're, you know, OCD and, you know, the ones that overrate airbrushes are probably the ones that are people that hardly ever use them. You know, they like owning them and they're shiny and nice, but they don't actually use the airbrush. Like this airbrush, like, let me just show you something quick. Like this tip in here is like a rusty old nail. Here, look at it. I think I filed it one time with, uh, like, I, like I know that I've, uh, look, I haven't even pulled it out lately because I've been painting so much with it and I probably can't even get it out. Yeah, I can't even get it out right now, right? Just, but I can though later, but I'm gonna just leave it in to paint with. But that's what I mean, like the tip on here, it's like a rusty old nail. And it's not even straight on the end. And if you're doing scenery and trees, who cares, right? And if I'm shooting IPA, uh, it's never going to clog. Never, right? So because I can't get the needle out, it shows you that, wow, Boomer's been painting a lot, you know, and just throwing it to the side, grabbing it, throwing it aside. So I have many airbrushes, and I use mostly Pache and Badger, and I've never overrated them. They speak for themselves. So there you go, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up some paint here now. I'll just start with this red brown. I maybe would want it a little bit darker. But uh, I'm going to use my good old uh, siphon feed because my gravity feed is uh, needs a new tip. I literally wore it out. And let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah, that's nice. Look at that. This is a Vega 2000 owned by Badger. Now, why do I need to overrate it? It works. So I'm going to paint this tree now. Um, like get the, basically the trunk darker, just like that. Because by the time I flock these, like you get the variation of color, the green on the brown trunk and branch. So that's why I like to do that. So uh, this won't take very long. And if you're wondering, this paint is super thin and I sh I'm probably shooting at 50, what is it? 50 plus PSI. That's right, 50 plus PSI. So if there's any little paint anomalies in the way, it'll just blow them right out of there. And that's the way I've always done it. So I'm just going to paint all these up now. It won't take me very long. And then what I might do after that is, is uh, spray some maybe lighter, like I have a lighter kind of earth like this. Sometimes a, a little dusting of that kind of makes the limbs or the little fibers pop a bit better. So that's what I'll do. And then once these are dry, uh, I'll flock them. And then just in closing on this, so when you paint them with, to me, acrylic like this, uh, it helps to seal any other additional loose fibers that might be on the tree, okay? Because we, we, we massaged them off, matte medium, which is compatible with Tamiya and isopropyl alcohol, won't hurt it. Um, so it'll be an acrylic glued and painted tree, so it'll stand the test of time. And uh, then we'll be ready to flock, which is a couple of methods you can do, I'll show you, with uh, micro uh, fibers and super fine turf foam, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna flock this tree now. Um, now there's many ways you can do this. Uh, I know I haven't mentioned before with spray adhesives, like um, if you wanna use spray adhesives, uh, to plow through bulk trees, then that's fine. But you might want to be careful that you don't oversaturate with glue because that tends to wreck everything. Because you don't want to uh, clog up all the light coming through the branch work. That's kind of what makes, you know, uh, the tree what it is, right? See that? You know, like you avoid that kind of puffball Christmas tree look, right? You know, you have trees where the light comes through. And of course, when they're lined up and stacked up, right? You get that layered effect kind of. Um, but that's up to you. But um, if you're gonna use spray glue, don't use 3M or solvent-based because it'll eat away slowly the synthetic fibers here. 
the static grass and eventually they'll dry right out and just crumble. Uh, they may not show right away, but as soon as you touch them or handle them or bump up against them, they just fall apart and uh, they won't stand the test of time. But if you want trees that are like once they're dry and sealed and then they stay, you know, resilient. And furthermore, uh, even if you squeeze them a bit, like they don't mat together, right? Like you would if you used a spray glue, you got to watch out for that. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this a little more methodical approach just so you can see how this static grass goes on. So I'm using this static grass 2 millimeter dark green FS613, which I like for the needles on here. Um, I'm not sure if, can you see those okay? So you can use the fine turf foam, which actually looks pretty good as well. So try different flocking um, applications and materials just to see what, you know, the kind of tree that you would like maybe, or the look. So I have this uh, X <laughs> ground nutmeg container. It has the perfect size holes in it. And I just load up the two mil in this. And then I'll show you what I do is I take some, once again, the Liquitex Professional Matte Meaning, because I love the viscosity of it. And the price is good and it's professional. And it'll stay flexible and it'll last indefinitely. So I uh, wet the brush really good. And then I basically just, brush the tree down like the fibers okay from the top down because i don't really want to like I, i'm not worried about the bottom of the limbs in this cage which are the static grass fibers which are actually you know the darker limbs right of the tree okay so i give it a good wipe down like that and you don't want the uh, glue or the adhesive to be too thick because then it gets big blobs on it and if it's too thin it runs into the fiber and it doesn't have as good adherence rate and it and it actually picks up static grass on the inside of the limbs and you want to stay away from putting flock on the inside of the trunk and the you know about 50 percent of the limbs so i find with this mat me and the viscosity is just perfect if you use a damp brush like this is a number 10 okay so then i take this little shaker here and i just start shaking it on right you don't need a static grass applicator for any of this, okay? There are methods that use static grass applicators for trees, but like I say, there's 101 ways to do it. But you can see this way you can recover this later, and you can see how that tree turns out, okay? Isn't that nice? I mean, that is a beautiful little tree, I think, you know, for any scale. It could be a large uh, end scale, medium HO, and or very small in O or whatever, you know, okay? So that's what I do, and I've got about 40 of them here, and uh, it'll probably take me about half an hour or so in an hour, and I'm just gonna enjoy flocking these trees, and then have even more fun when I go to plant them on the layout, okay?